we've seen many changes in technology and we need to make sure that we understand what's happening. On the slide behind, you'll see some of the major changes we've seen in technology over the last few decades. From the telephony side of things, when we had switches come in to replace all of that manual process, major changes there. The automation that's occurred in, in manufacturing industries to ensure that things can be done faster, better quality, all of that. We then look at technologies like ATM that were introduced, I think, 30 years ago. It's about that where, in many ways, they were introduced to reduce cost. But then customers became to expect that as part of the service and extend the banking hours to a 24 by 7 operation. So different technologies might be applied by businesses at different times to achieve efficiencies, um, cost reduction, but what eventually happens with them is they're adopted by the end users to, uh, to make life simpler. So your phone calls go through all over the world, no one, no one cares. The quality of the production line is maintained. Uh, and we believe that cloud computing is doing this for the IT environment. So the industrialization of, of IT per se is what we're talking about with cloud computing. In my area, which yeah, I might talk about desktop virtualization or the management of devices. Now, traditionally, it's desktops and laptops. Most people are now very familiar with Blackberries and iPads and iPhones and that type of technology. I've covered ATMs. We can talk about point of sale, kiosks, other technologies. What's driving a lot of this digital information and what will continue to drive it is the fact that just about everything is becoming IP enabled. You all, I'm sure, are well aware that cars have a lot of technology in them. And those cars, as an example, often don't get to send that information back to the manufacturer until you take them in for a service. And if you don't take them into a recognised service provider, it may never get back. But in the Toyota case, most of those cars had the ability to send that information back on an ongoing basis. Whether it's every time you park the car in your garage, it, it connected back to a wireless network and sent the data back. Yeah. Whether it did it whenever there was an issue and automatically connected to the network and sent it through. But, so if you have a think about it, you're talking about device management of cars. You're talking about device management of fridges. You're talking about device management of everything that the manufacturers want to know what's going on, how do they improve their product, what can they take out of it so their product is better, easier to manufacture and better for the consumer. So with, you, know, you think about all of that, there's enormous amounts of data that will be flooding the network that the IT department will have to manage. But in the IT environment you have today, where in most cases you have distributed servers, you have multiple servers running applications. Yeah. The statistics say that up to 85% of your servers that are out there today sit idle. So there's a lot of capacity that you've spent money on that is not being used. Security breaches continue to happen because there are always new sources of information and, and data points that get into your network as you extend your environment and you've got to protect all that data. The statistics up here, the 70, 70 cents per dollar spent on IT is seen to be spent on what's there today. Managing it, making sure it continues to operate. Uh, and I'm not sure if you've all got that data for your own organisations, but uh, it's the lion's share of your dollars will be in maintaining what's there Yet the business is saying, do more. Innovate, help me move into the 21st century. What else can we do to gain a competitive edge? So if you can find a way to reduce that 70 cents and take the money and use it in, in ways that will drive business performance, you're going to be better served. Automation is still key, it's very important. Whatever happens, if you need to continue to do it, can you automate it? Can you make sure that it is done and the human factor is removed? So you always get the same quality result. Gets into the standardisation of workloads and, and what's going on out there. Again, workloads in most cases from, uh, from an IBM perspective is about uh, what are your employees doing for their job? What is the work that they have to do? 
you know, what are the different types of workers you've got there and that will define, you know, define a workload. A lot of that will get down to what are the applications they use. Where do those applications run? And how do we make sure that the environment they're working in is the most cost effective from an IT perspective, but providing the right in the level of end user productivity. And then you look at the utilisation of infrastructure and the virtualization of hardware. I would say most of you have already seen virtualization occur at the server level. Yeah. We've gone from multiple networks to single uh, unified networks for voice, data, video. We've, the world is becoming virtualized. Yeah. If you think about the virtualization of everything, if I need another 50 gig of storage, or if I need another five servers, or if I, if I can just turn it on in, you know, might call it a utility type model, then how much easier will that make it? From, you know, from the customers we're working with, you know, the provision of servers for test and development purposes. You know, most of them will have processes in place to say if I want to experiment with something, I need to go and procure a new server, go through the process of justifying it, and that will generally take weeks to months. If you can tap into a secure environment where you can just turn it on, it can be done in minutes to hours. And that's the type of uh, cloud technology we're, we're talking about and the concepts behind it all. Again, change management around that type of thing becomes simpler. If, if all you're doing is switching things on and off, it's a lot, lot simpler than allocating multiple resources to all of that. Changing releases, yeah, simple. If you've got the cloud, if you're managing a private one yourself and it's dynamic, it's not out, out everywhere, you don't have to distribute the software. Everywhere you can control it and make sure it's available. I've mentioned the assessment and planning how to get started because it's about the workloads, your business, and picking the right technologies for those workers. Why would you want to use IBM in, in regard to this? Well, if you've got to pick the right technologies, we understand virtualization across all, all the technologies. We're doing it ourselves in many, many ways today. The answer for that group of um, workers could be PCs. For that group, it could be virtualization. And it might be using Citrix technologies. It could be using VMware technology. It could be using WISE technology. It could be using application streaming technologies. There's different use cases. So from my perspective, you need someone who's going to look at it from a workload perspective and provide you the best solution for those workloads. Okay. And as, as this evolves from private to hybrid to public clouds, okay, you need to be looking at where are you today? Private might be right. You want someone that you can work with to move to the public cloud over time.